Hi everyone. Tonight's video is going to be a little bit of a review of everything that we've learned so far uh, with a special focus on some notation and names of different items. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about congruent angles and how to construct congruent angles. So that'll be a little bit new. But let's start off with just a review of everything that we've talked about so far. First thing we have is just a diagram here and a bunch of different items listed on the side here that I want to draw in. So line MN, ray PQ, angle HJK, plane QRS, and segment RS. And I want to take all of these items and match them up basically with the picture that I have right here. So the first thing I'm looking at is line MN. I want to find a line in here that I can draw in and label as MN. So if I'm looking at all these different items in here, the only line that I see is this one right here. So I'll put point M and point N on that line. And that's the only line because it's the only item that has an arrow on each end. So that is line MN. And for notation review, another way that I can write that is MN using the two capital letters with an arrow above, or a line above with arrows on each end. So that's line MN. That's another way to write this, which actually writes out the word line MN. Without writing out the word, you can just draw in the little symbol over above. And so looking at the picture, that's the only line that I see there. Now, ray PQ is another item I want to see on here. There's a few different rays that I see. There's this ray out by itself. There's a couple that are right here. I'm going to call this ray here ray PQ. So I'll put a P right there and Q at this point on the ray. Now, if I want to write out in with a symbol, I can list this as PQ, remembering that there's no arrow above the P because that's the end point of the ray, and then there is a little arrow above the Q because that's on the end of the ray that goes on. So the reason I didn't pick one of these for PQ is because the next item I want to identify here is angle HJK. And remember, an angle is always listed with three points where the middle point is the vertex of the angle. So if I'm looking at these two rays that are combined together, and remember two rays meeting at a common point is what defines an angle, these are the two rays that I want to make to uh, form up my angle HJK. So I'm going to call that J, because that's the vertex of this angle. And then if I call this point here H, and this point here K, I have HJK, that makes that angle right here, okay? So I could put a number in there, remember, sometimes we'll use a number to identify an angle. So the other way that I can write angle HJK now is an angle HJK, right? You actually draw like a little angle. I could also call this angle KJH because as long as I'm listing the vertex in the middle, I can put the endpoints or the points on the rays on, on either side. And then the third name that I have for this is angle one, right? Because I put a one right there. The other thing I want to identify is plane QRS. And so a plane can be identified either by three points on the plane or a script capital letter, if there's any of those located. And so P and, uh, PQ, I already see those points on there. Uh, I'm going to call this down here RS, and I'll show you that on the last uh, item. And so now I have plane QRS. This plane could have a number of different points, or a number of different names now. I could call it MJK. I could call this plane QNH, JHK, whatever, as long as I'm using three points that are on this plane. So that's a uh, number of different uh, names that we have for plane for this plane. And then lastly, segment RS, I just kind of drew that in because I needed to have points R and S on my plane. And another notation for that is RS with a line above it, but there's no arrows on each end because it's a segment. And remember, a line segment has two endpoints, so it doesn't continue on forever, which a line would with all the arrows. So that's just a little bit of notation review. Just make sure whenever we are using these different items that we're 
writing out either the word in front of them and then we're using the pr appropriate points to identify what is what. And then if we are going to use the symbols, just make sure we're using the right ones. A line needs arrows on each end. Array needs an arrow over the point that we're using that is on the end with the arrow. Don't put the arrow over the end point, right? This would be incorrect to put it with uh, arrow over the P. Angles have a bunch of different names. If you're going to use three points to identify them, make sure the vertex is in the middle. If you're going to use the number, that's okay. Just make sure that that number is the name of the angle and not the measure of the angle with degrees. And then a plane, you can use any three points that are on that plane. If you have multiple planes in the picture, that's where you have to be careful and make sure you're using points that are on our coplanar that are all on the same plane. And then a segment is just identified by the two endpoints and make sure when you use the symbol you don't put any arrows above it. So that's a little review. Now what I want you to do to bring to class tomorrow, and this is going to be a part of our chapter one quiz, is to draw your own diagram. It can look similar to what's above, that's fine, but all items we've learned about so far need to be on your diagram. So points, lines, segments, rays, angles, and planes, right? So at least one of each of these, and then I'd also like you to list out the possible names. Uh, so, for example, we did here with angle HJK, I gave you all of these other ways to identify that angle. So when you draw out your diagram, I want the same thing. Um, and you could do something like this where you kind of like combine a few things, like you put the, the um, angle, multiple angles here based off of your line. You could have used JH as a ray, something like that. As long as you are identifying that you have points, lines, segments, rays, angles, and planes on your diagram. I want to see that when we come to class tomorrow. Okay, so that's a little bit of a review so far, and we'll have a little chapter one quiz. Um, but we will also be talking about something new today. So we're going to be talking about congruent angles. And we've already talked about congruent segments. And congruent angles are angles that have the same exact measure. So in this diagram here, I have these two angles. Um, let's call this, let's give these some, uh, some names. So I will call this point here P, we'll call this R, S, and we'll call this T and U. So remember when we're looking at diagrams, sometimes we have the angles that are named by three points. Sometimes there's a number in here. But what we want to make sure that we're not confusing with that number is if there's a measure in here. So in this case, I'm going to call this angle TPU, and we're going to say that that's 42 degrees. So this is angle TPU. This is not angle 42 because I see the little degree symbol here. So this is 42 degrees. It's talking about the measure. So over here, let's call RPS. We're going to say that that's 42 degrees also. So if these two have the same exact measure, the same degree measure, that means they are congruent. And so if I'm thinking about uh, notation for this, we can still say angle RPS. We can still use that congruent notation. We used that when we talked about congruent segments, right? Looks like an equal line with a little wave on top, or an equal symbol, I should say, with a wave on top. So I can say RPS, angle RPS, is congruent to angle TPU. And the reason I can say that is because 42 degrees equals 42 degrees. Those two angles are congruent. So that's one notation. That's when you'll see it like written out in a statement. The notation on the diagram that we'll see, you'll either see the angle measure and pretty clearly 42 degrees equals 42 degrees. That's easy. Sometimes they might not have the angle measure. What they'll do is they'll have an arc right here that looks like this. And so that's saying that these two angles are congruent. Just like when we had congruent segments, we put little hash marks on them, and that would identify that they were congruent. And also we mentioned with uh, congruent segments that sometimes if there's a picture and like these two segments would be congruent, and then another two, you'd put like two hash marks on the next one. So if we have a picture where there's different sets of congruent angles, you'll see one uh, arc 
to identify that these two are congruent. And then you might also see like if there was another pair that was congruent, they might get like two arcs like this. So sometimes you'll see two arcs to identify that like a different set of angles are also congruent in the same diagram. So that's just something to look out for whenever we're talking about congruent angles. So those are the different types of notations. This idea of congruence is going to come up, you know, a lot. Different shapes, so that sort of thing. But always remember with angles, it's talking about having exactly the same measure. So now let's do a little example with some algebra. Let's say that we have these diagram just like above, and we have these two angles, and we'll say that this angle here is 5x plus 4 degrees, and this angle here is 3x plus 12 degrees, and we might want to find the measure of each angle. So let's find the measure of each angle and what I'll do here is I'll just put in the arc. I'm not even going to name these angles, right? But since I have the arc right here, the, the symbol for congruence, and I know that 5x, this angle measure is 5x plus 4 degrees, this angle measure is 3x plus 12 degrees, now I want to find the measure of each angle. Just by looking at this picture, even without names for the angles, I know that 5x plus 4 equals 3x plus 12 because this, these arcs tell me that these two angles are congruent and if two angles are congruent they have the same measure so that means 5x plus 4 equals 3x plus 12 because just like up here if these two angles are congruent 42 equals 42 okay so if I know that 5x plus 4 equals 3x plus 12 I can solve for x and then that'll allow me to plug back in to find these each uh, the measure of each one of these angles. So what we'll want to do is isolate x. So first step is to subtract 4 from each side. And so now we have 5x equals 3x plus 8. Subtracted 4 canceled here. 12 minus 4 is 8. Now I want to get the x's together. So I'm going to move them over to this side. So now I subtract 3x from each side, so the x's are gone over here. And now we're left with 2x equals 8. And so the last step to solve for x, you divide both sides by 2. And so we have that x equals 4. All right, so I've solved this little algebra equation, but I haven't answered uh, what I was asked to do from the start, which is to find the measure of each angle. So I need to take this x equals 4 and plug it in for the values of the two angles. So I have 5x plus 4. And if x equals 4, that's 5 times 4 plus 4. So that's 20 plus 4. So that's 24. So this should be 24 degrees. Now it should be equal to the same over here, so let's double check and make sure that we did this right. So it is 3x plus 12, which equals 3 times 4 plus 12. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 12 equals 24. So 24 degrees is what I get for both angle measures. And so that's correct because these were congruent. So they're equal. 24 equals 24. So everything checks out. Excellent. Okay, last thing we want to do is construct some congruent angles. So again, we're going to do some work with our compass. And so we're going to um, copy basically this angle that I see right here. So let's, let's name this angle. We're going to call this P, Q, and R. Okay, so P, Q, and R we got. I want to reconstruct it down here on this segment that I have, uh, or this uh, ray that I have down at the bottom. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my compass, I put one point on the vertex, then I open it up to another point on my ray on one side of my vertex, on um, one side of my angle, and I'm going to make an arc. And it should pass between um, these two points. So maybe my uh, 
of this point Q or point P right here. Okay, so it should pass between those two points. Um, so I have P, P, Q, R. I have it open to that certain angle measure. So um, I'm going to translate this down here. I'm going to put my point on my vertex. And now I'm going to draw this arc down on this bottom ray that I have. Okay, and I'm going to call these points something else. This is, I'll call this um, point D. We'll call right here point E. And now if I'm thinking about how what I'm doing here is I'm trying to copy point angle PQR. And so I've drawn an arc where the point of the compass was on the vertex and then the arc went through point R. So if I'm translating this angle over onto this, D is the same as Q and E is the same as R. So, so far I have a lot of this angle already copied in down here. I have the vertex, this side, and this point E that matches up with point R. So the last thing I got to do is figure out how, how wide I have to open up this angle and to draw in this second side of it. So what I'm going to do next is take my point of my compass and um, we're going to rotate it. Let's see if we can do this right. Um, we're going to rotate this so that it's, uh, it, it's opened up from R to P. So now that I have this opened up from R to P, I can draw an arc through there. And that's going to tell me how long I have to have it open down here from point E. So since point E is replicating point R, I move the compass down here. I put the point on E just like I had it on R. And now I'm going to draw my arc. And right where these two arcs cross is the same point where these two arcs cross, which is point P. So now I can um, let's see if I can get, get rid of that. Um, so now I can put a point there where they intersect. I'll call that point C. And now I can draw a line connecting my vertex at D, goes through point C, which is the same as point P up here. And now I've replicated this angle. I've taken angle PQR. I've reconstructed it down here as CDE. We'll do a couple more examples of this in class tomorrow, but I just wanted to show you how to do this real quick with the compass. And hope you have a great night. So don't forget to bring in your diagram with all the different items on it and be prepared for a little chapter one quiz tomorrow. Thanks and have a great night.